Faculty of Agriculture, University of Clare Avenue. Senior Assistant Bursa, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Clare Avenue. Representative of the Technical Staff, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Clare Avenue. Student representatives of the three degree programs from the 4 to 100 series. Coordinator, the Faculty of Agriculture Undergraduate Research Symposium 2014. Our journey being the best and producing the best graduates. To lay the foundation for this worthy event and make it to become a milestone in the faculty history, there has been a pillar of strength who has always steered the faculty to the best pastures, a major driving force behind the scenes of this symposium. That is none other than Professor K. Samarasimha, the Dean Faculty of Agriculture, University of Peralta. Dear sir, this invitation is for you to formally welcome the gallery. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Professor Dan Zebra, our teacher for the after the American speaker. Professor Abdullah Mawan, the Dr. Wan Chancellor, as well as the Dean of the University. Professor Anuri Tunsingra, the Dean of the University. 
So it's a twenty percent one. The coordinate of faculty of agriculture and the research is going to be more important. So that's it. That's all. It's a department. The first of the academic staff. Senior academic staff of agriculture. Emeritus professors. Distributes in my duties. Members of the non academic staff. Fresh graduates. Students. Ladies and gentlemen. Let me very warmly welcome you all to the first Faculty of Agriculture undergraduate research sessions that is going to be held on this morning. The Faculty of Agriculture Even though we announced this research symposium as the first annual research symposium of the Faculty of Agriculture, please don't get enough misunderstood. I am very proud to tell you that the Faculty of Agriculture of this university is the first faculty to introduce undergraduate research sessions to the university system of Sri Lanka. So in that sense, this is not the first. I will explain why it became first. Undergraduate research sessions aiming to make a forum for the final year students to present their findings to a wider Gathering, including academia, industry experts, potential employers, most importantly, was held in 1993 for the first time in Sri Lanka. This was organized by the Department of Animal Science at the time as a departmental activity. As a departmental activity. The main objective was actually not necessarily to make uh, an audience to present their findings, but to uh, have an interaction with the industry and the students and the staff. That was the main objective. And this was then resulted all the other departments infected by the year 2013 all eight academic departments had started for work conducting department level undergraduate research sessions with fellowship gatherings where the potential employers were invited to interact with the potential employees you can do it. This year, we thought to step more forward and thought of organizing a mega event, an undergraduate research symposium common to the entire faculty, right in the departmental boundaries. That is why we call this is the first faculty undergraduate research symposium to be continued from this year onwards as an annual event of the faculty. There is an event today, it's a special day for the faculty. One thing, as I already explained, this research symposium. Organized for the first time for the entire faculty. I mean, this is the first such occasion, <coughs> such uh, event in the Delhi University. The second reason why today is important for us in the morning, 
there was another event took place within the faculty. A program called Meet the Leaders. Also organized for these graduates. We invited three very well known leaders in the country representing three different areas, very eminent leaders, and had a discussion, interactive session with graduates. So they were busy in the morning also. It was very successful. Very much successful. This also a new introduction to the UFC system, I believe. Which will continue. At least in our country. This will be continued. We are very well, well known as the faculty which has introduced many new things to the university system. Thanks to the previous people who served in this faculty in different capacities. Thanks to the present people who are serving in the faculty. They were innovative, they were creative, and they were skillful, they were devoted to think in different lines, to introduce various marvelous innovative ideas, not only to the faculty, but these things were they on spread out to the entire university system in the country. So in that sense, I am very much proud, proud of the record. I must thank all the people who contributed to this development, especially the undergraduate research symposium that we are having today was a very, very big task to the organization. I personally know they worked hard throughout the day, in the night, it was a very hard time for them. Maybe for the next years, it will not be so hard because now the system is created. For the first time, it was a very hard time, Certain, especially to break from the department of all trees and come into a common Backbone uh, to, to decide on various uh, logistic decisions. It was not very easy. So I must congratulate the coordinator, Professor Vadima Silva, and her team for the wonderful job done. I congratulate all the graduates, all the presenters. Today, for their successful academic work in the faculty, for their successful research projects. I believe there will be enough people to listen to you, there will be enough interest to catch your findings. So you will be privileged to sell your talents today. I, even though there is a uh, lot of time, I take this opportunity to thank the chief guest, Professor Janet Silva, chairman of the National Research Council, uh, for kindly agreeing to accept our invitation. It was done over the phone. I have, a, I, I have never met it. I met it for the first time today. Professor Lama for taking up the burden to act as a vice chancellor and come here at this location and all the other invited guests, the members of the academic staff, 
Pranaka Krishna, everybody who contributed to this event. I thank you all uh, with my uh, deepest sense. I wish this proceedings a great success and all this good work will continue. Thank you very much. as a whole, tries to be the center of excellence in higher education in the world. The dream that is driven to success by strong leadership and as well as the effective administration. The Vice Chancellor of the University is the leading figure of this endeavor. I would like to invite Professor M. T. Lamarza, the acting Vice Chancellor, University of Peradania, to address the gathering. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, Dr. Jan Prasilva, Director of Postgraduate Institute of Medicine and the Chairman of the National Research Council. Professor Samar Singha, the Dean. Professor Amro Vikram Singha, the Dean of Science. Heads of the Department, the Senior Professors, Professors, and all the members of the academic staff. Administrative staff, non academic staff, students, ladies and gentlemen. I am representing the Vice Chancellor. However, I have decided to close time before and reserve time in my diary to attend this important meeting. I thought that I would learn something from the Faculty of Agriculture and take to the Faculty of Medicine. Father Vice Chancellor wanted me to tell a few things, and he was he is very happy to see the Faculty of Agriculture taking interest in modeling and grooming researchers and academics for the future of this country and beyond. And Faculty of Agriculture, as we heard a little while ago, is a long journey for them over a period of 21 years. Building consistent, consistently this kind of programs and institutions within inverted comma is not an easy task. One might do it in ad hoc manner this year, but not, not next year. So the interest and the commitment you collectively taken to make this a success starting back from 1993 to today tells a big story about what the Faculty of Agriculture is capable of. We are students or other venues. We also remember our such things in our lives. And research we are presenting today in high abstract form or later on as publication will be remembered for the rest of the life. You will talk to your parents, you will talk to your friends, and we will keep on talking about these things for years to come. So therefore, it is a good memory that you are taking from the faculty today where you live. The research, as we know, addresses issues that are pertinent, but I think more important than that, because Jamal Silva might touch on this, it inculcates critical thinking, which is useful, beyond the arena of research. And equally important is to plan something very, very carefully, taking into consideration for the loopholes and the other factors which can affect and executing that according to the plan is something we all can do better. The students and the graduates and the faculty as a whole, what we have done today, an example for the other faculties to follow. I'm sure that these who are here and academic staff members from other faculties will take this message and try to implement something at least in small scale, uh, like what you started back in 1993. And the students probably will have a bigger role to play by trying to uh, expand this on the other faculties so that eventually 
without losing the identity of the network of advertisers and look at your different reports here, you may be able to translate this into a human readable uh, research session uh, on an annual basis. By chance, I wanted me to inform you that he is very keen to spend money on research. In that direction, last year, 10% of the capital budget was spent on research. He said, if any publications arise from these presentations, he will be more than happy to find a way to find that kind of publication that was something. And also, we wanted to tell you that if there are any um, care that he would render, for a uh, bright funds to attend international conferences and all that, and he will find, find a way to support that kind of uh, uh, those those schedules. Now the university ranking depends on many things and including these abstract presentations, of course, all the may not carry uh, uh, as much as uh, the research uh, publications. The recently published uh, Ranking, ranking, not just bibliometric ranking, but based on academic performance, taking into consideration the publications, uh, research, abstract uh, presentations, impact factor of the journals, and citations, and all that. All that. The University of Pennsylvania, out of 40,000 universities in the world, ranks at 1,460k, which is a good achievement, I would say. It's not the absolute question, but it is. Which percentage, whether we are in the first ten percent or the last lap of last ten percent, we are in the first ten percent in the, according to the the academic performance. So that is a very very good thing. All these if you contribute for us to reach higher level, I would say. The role of NRC, I cannot resist saying something about and my good friend from the Jagatu say you are. Which is as a dean, and I am very pleased to see him because he served on our faculty as a lecturer and then senior lecturer for three years before he moved, before he moved to Guadalajara. We lost him to Guadalajara, but he is the heir to the country. And we had an interactive session in the morning with my academic staff, and was generally able to provide and time to do that. And also, he believed in pedagogy. Not because he was here as a, as a lecturer and senior lecturer, but he thinks that, and as he was deliberating um, with Professor Singh, you guys take challenge and you deliver the goods we want. Therefore, of 250 million rupees that he has identified for research activities for the next five years, and under five grant schemes, three were given to the academia, not because. He was friendly with the area, but he was then trying to be familiar. One came to the faculty of agriculture, uh, the other one, the faculty of medicine, uh, to study uh, snake uh, medication and trying to produce uh, antivirus. The other one is there between the uh, faculty of science and the faculty of medicine on chronic diseases uh, of unknown origin. So, occasion on behalf of Vice Chancellor and the University, and we appreciate and we try to live up to your expectations for the and the silver. Finally, I, as a dean of medical faculty, and also representing the Vice Chancellor, do not see any problem of continuing this research session in years to come for that and for today, given my best wishes. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is one of the most special person for the entire research community. Innovations make the nation progress in science. For that, the country needs a leading research culture. Today, we have invited the most appropriate person to inspire the research community and the budding researchers. Please head the country's pioneering research institute the National Research Council. He is an academician and a physician by profession. Ladies and gentlemen, I take the pleasure of inviting the chief guest and the guest speaker today, 
we therefore bring Professor Janaka De Silva to deliver his guest speech. And the reason why I accepted this invitation to come here was of the enormous respect I have for the discipline of education. Today I was asked to talk uh, by some of my friends about something that would be appropriate for the cross section of the academic community, including students. So I thought I would talk about scientific research in, in our country. And it is not going to be all praise for scientific research in the country. There will be some hard facts that we have to face when we are discussing. I told uh, Lama that when I gave a similar lecture in Karambu, I started off by saying that I have given up on my generation for research and therefore I like to talk to the younger generation, at least to inspire them. But I think from the audience here, they don't think that it's a single person I can do it. Professionals and academics. And I know that there are some professionals here who are not in the university. As you know, I have a service function. And we disseminate knowledge that is our teaching. But we forget sometimes that it is our duty to generate knowledge in our area of expertise. And generating knowledge is by research. There is no other way in which you can generate knowledge. And as some great philosopher once said, without research, there can be no progress. And that is why countries which have a history of one tenth of our history, 200 years, USA, 2,500 years, Sri Lanka, we are in two different levels in the world uh, world. The other question that people tell me, or the other statements that people make, is that why is research important for everyone? Research is important for people like you, who are interested, who do work, who are traveling abroad, who do lectures, who do medals, who do grants, we, we don't need that much research. We can still be in our profession, we can still be in our academic profession without any research. And my answer to them is a very polite no. Because the most important thing about doing research is that it helps you to learn this great thing called scientific method. When I did my PhD in the UK, I worked on some cells which are called macrophages in the intestine of people who had a condition called Alzheimer's. 
Where can you straight out and now I know as a person who does some really good work, like for example, a counseling, right? So, what you may say is the matter with me. Here yeah, I did macrophage based research in the gut, and now I am doing snakes. And my answer is that my PhD did not teach me only about macrophages, it taught me scientific method. And once you learn that method, you can apply it to any area that you want. Even if you stop doing research at some stage in your career, say that you feel that research is not for me. I just want to become a senior lecturer and have a family. And I'm not interested in any promotion or anything. I'm not interested in research. Even if you are a person who feels like that, and I hope you are not, learning the scientific method will enable you to read another person's research critically. If you don't know scientific method, you can't read the paper and say whether what this person is writing is valid or not. You are not a good judge. You will just say yes to anything that that paper says. So even if you don't do research, if you have been disciplined by research, it's a great thing for your career. And even for a person who doesn't do research, it assists in what I call informed or evidence-based practice of medicine, it is evidence-based medicine by which we treat patients and it just improves performance. So whether you are an academic, I don't think academics have any excuse not to do research, but even if you are not an academic and you have a professional in your field, it is always important to do some research at some part or some point of your career. So I hope I want to get this point across to the young people. Research is important for all functions of the There is no escape from that. It is a duty that you must undertake. Good research has good outcomes, changes policy, leads to beneficial interventions, and so on. New crop varieties are made that are resistant to climates, helps to increase the harvest, and so on. So good outcomes. Poor quality research is a waste of resources. And some people will even argue that it is even unethical to do bad research. Because bad practices can be harmful <coughs> to our environment, to our patients, to animals that we research on. So poor quality research is not a good thing. But these two are very subjective statements. And the objective measurement of research productivity and quality usually includes a measure of publications and patents. And of these, publications are the most widely used. And I am talking beyond the front doors to the back. In my book, and this is an original slide, there are several types of publications. The first one, is what people like me sometimes get on the stage and say, in my experience. Or they are. If I ever say that at any lecture, you may get up and leave, because that is not worthy of an academic lecture. In my experience, it's not a publication. If your experience is worth anything, it must be published somewhere. The better thing is a presentation. <coughs> but again, if you do a presentation without a published abstract, there is no record of what you say. And after all, young ones, students, why are you doing research? Because you want to come and present it here, that you have found something important. And you would like that record to history. So that when you come back to the university, 20 years, like me, you will be able to take an abstract book from the library and say, that's my abstract there. If you don't publish it as an abstract, it will just disappear, as I say, like a sound wave, diminishing into nothing. So, 
Precipitation without an expected result of work. Real research. The lowest you can try to achieve is a presentation in a published abstract. That's the lowest. That's what you are trying to do. But the gold standard of any research project is to publish it in a journal as an original article. And for those who aspire for an academic career, when I am asked to judge people's publications or promotions to professor and so on, I have a very simple rule. If the abstract to paper ratio is more than two, I become very negative to that choice. Because you must learn to convert our presentations and abstracts into full papers. And that is what will get us the recognition, the widespread emulation of our community of academics and also improve the standing of our universities. And then comes the question, as I said, this lecture is mainly for the new graduates, where should you publish? Are all journals equal? And in my own field, is a publication in nature equal to one in the medical journal of Somalia? I have nothing against Somalia, but there is a journal called the medical journal of Somalia. There is a journal and the answer is no. There are different qualities of journals. The lowest is a journal with no peer review. Peer review is a system where your paper is read by people equal or slightly maybe higher than you in your field who then decide whether your paper deserves to be published. That is what peer review is. Not a fight at all. So if a journal doesn't have peer review, that is like the journal of Daniel Silva, who will invite friends to publish and after about two or three issues, it will just disappear. So don't ever publish your work in journals without peer review. Peer reviewed journals also can sometimes be very deceptive. There may be journals which are actually very bad that claim to be peer reviewed. Because after all, people believe it when you write it in the front page, we are in judge. So how do you judge? How do you judge whether a peer review journal is a worthy journal for you to publish your work? Is look at how often this journal is published. If a journal is published, more than four times a year. That is, it is published four times a year. That means the journal is a sustainable journal. And it is published four times a year more because people are sending their articles to their journal to publish. It's a popular journal where people want their work to be published. If a journal is published less than that, then the chance is that after about three, four years, the journal will cease to be published. So when you are choosing a journal, choose a peer reviewed journal that is published quarterly or four, three point eight. And most of such journals are indexed. They are indexed in these international indices like the expanded science citation index, Scopus, so and so on. And for my friends from the social sciences and humanities who always complain that they have no good journals to publish their work, there are two good indexes here. The social science citation index with over 3,000 journals. And the arts and humanities citation index with over 1,000 journals. So they have no excuse. Index, a publication in an index journal, therefore, is what you should aim to make your presentation here today by next year. And then there are measures of quality, the quality of the journal. And like the ESET score, which is not the most perfect way to select paper in universities, but it is the best available and the most widely used. The impact factor is the one. That is why we use to measure the quality of a journal. 
And as I told Rama in the morning, I am a very simple minded person and I can never remember the formula that is used. And how I remember the fact factor is that if a journal publishes 20 articles in 2008 and 2009, and it is cited 20 times in another index journal in 2010, the impact factor is one. So that is a very simple way of remembering what an impact factor is. And just to give you an example of how diverse these views are, the Ceylon Medical Journal, the highest impact factor journal in our country, has an impact factor of 0 0.7. 0 0.7. The Journal of the Natural Science Foundation has an impact factor of 0 0.3. Nature has an impact factor of 44. Okay, so they are as diverse as that. An impact factor of one is considered something that you could be, you know, reasonably happy. Then there is the quality of a scientist's research. So when you are choosing your postgraduate supervisor, try to find out what this person is. Is he as is he as really is he really good as he says he is? Have a look at his research output. I'm causing rebellion here. Have a look at his research output. Look at his H index. The H index is also an index which measures the quality of uh, the person's work. And again, for simple minds like me, if you have published 30 papers, <coughs> each of which has been cited 30 times, your H index is 30. So if you have published 500 papers, and only 30 of those papers have been cited 30 times, then your H index is 30. If you have published 35 papers and 30 of those papers have been cited more than 30 times, still your H index is 30. So it is a qualitative, not only a quantitative measure, but a qualitative measure of your research. And the highest H index in the world is from the US for physicists who has a H index of 169. So, 169 of these papers have been cited 169 times each. But we are a little more down to earth, and I suggest that you go for the I10 index, which is a measure of the number of publications of a scientist which have been cited 10 times or more. At least start from there. And that is what young probation lecturers and young senior lecturers will aspire get an IT index of about 15 or 20 within the first 5 to 10 years of your career. Just a little digression about open access publication. I just want to tell again the people that the senior people know all this. Scientific publication is a industry, it is a business. And Science Citation Index is owned by Thomson Reuters, which is a New York based company which is on the stock market. This India is a Dutch company which owns Focus. They are private companies and they make their money by charging you and me to read their papers. And this has led to a backlash of scientists saying no. All our work is submitted free to this journal so people should be able to read it free. So there's a growing movement to support this open access publication where it is free to anyone with an internet connection and if you have an internet connection you can read the full text of any paper. It has gained so much ground that all seven of the UK's research councils, the Wellcome Trust, the Gates Foundation, Federal agencies in the US require that the research that they fund is published open access. And I am going to take the NRC also there. Not to say that it has to be an open access journal, but it has to be open access. So it can be a traditional journal where you pay a publication fee 
so that anyone can access your article. And from this year, the NRC will fund publication fees of the 250,000 degrees per research account. So you should aspire to publish open access because you want your work to be read by you. That's the whole point of doing this. Now there are little doubts about open access journals saying that there are no quality open access journals. I just mean, how many times do we open our spam box to say, Hi Jonathan, this is Jenny from China. Would you like to submit a paper to? And so on. But that kind of journal is never indexed. So even if you have an open access journal, and if that journal is indexed, it would be one of the things that I showed you that exists, then it is a respectable journal. Some are highly reputed. In the USA, there is Public Library of Science. In Britain, there is Biomed Center. And conversely, some of the old fashioned state science citation index supporters, science citation index journals are very poor in fact. For example, the Russian Journal of Dermatology. I don't know if you have heard of it. In fact, number 0.4. The Brazilian Brazilian Journal of Physics, in fact, number 0.5, is on very low in fact. But they are in the science citation index. Whereas plus medicine has an impact factor of more than 40, plus neglected tropical diseases has the highest impact factor among tropical medicine journals. BMC medicine has an impact factor of 7, and I have forgot to put it here, plus biology has an impact factor of maybe 20 more. So don't be scared of the word open access. You can still choose good open access journals. Those that are index, those that have a high impact factor, or some of these very low impact journals in science citation. So then, after this little bit about value, what about our performance? Our performance is not good. No, even I don't have data after 2009, so how can it be good? I have a German of data. <laughs> I promise you the next time if you ever invite me, sir, I will update this to 2040. But let's look at up to 2009. So over the last what? scientists who are working here, who have a Sri Lankan address, has nearly tripled, threefold. The number of Sri Lankan institutions recorded in the SCI has more than doubled during some time. And for whatever it's worth, the people who have received, who have received this lens and work for scientific publications has also nearly doubled over the last 20 years. So we may think that we are to be until I show you this slide, which is the worldwide number of publications in SCI for 2009, and we are better than Nepal, Japan, Lesotho, Bhutan, and Maldives. And if we are aspiring to be a middle-income country, I think we should at least move towards Malaysia, Kenya, and Thailand, as well Pakistan, I, I shouldn't say even, but you know, that's funny said, but Pakistan, Indonesia, Peru, Bangladesh, which have far lower GDP status per capita, have more populations. And then what about the quality, what about the qualitative assessment? Most of the research done in this country has been and is descriptive. The classic phrase, eh? the prospective descriptive perception of study, the most boring thing on earth 
when I am ready to observe that, and when I start reading that, I shut the bed and I give it to a Tony and give it to God. Because I am not interested in a perspective, perception, and descriptive study. And my friend Sarod Jaisin about Pagalia friends in Kalambo did this study on the SMP presentation and the medical association. And only four out of nine seats and three out of eighty-three present it was presented in 2005 and in Asunbad in Peta in 2011. Only four of the hundred and five monitors. So why do we need to increase output? It is not only that. We have to improve the quality of our research and we have to move from observation to intervention. That is the message I want to give you. We have to move away from observation and studies now. The time has come. And what are the strengths we have to do? We have a pool of highly trained professionals and scientists. I know I like medicine. Agriculture has some of the best trained professionals and academics in this country and the region. Many of you all have been exposed to research and centers of excellence because many of the DMPs have been done abroad. If you do a PhD, then you are convinced of the importance of research and you have come back here because you are motivated to find solutions to the problems in our country. So we have a very good, strong, trained, committed human resource. But we have people. We have a lack of self-confidence to undertake large-scale studies. When I was told by the WHO that they are going to pay $5 million to do some study in tropical medicine, and I was a junior senior lecturer in the department, I said, oh, it's too much money. I don't want to handle this much of money. But we hear the type of us. Okay, that's because I had no self-confidence in myself that I could deliver on this research project. We are also the first to multidisciplinary research We don't like working with other people. Some of my department members would rather come to a veterinary faculty in Vera than here to talk about statistics than go to their own Indian department to do statistics. If I have any strength in research, it is the multidisciplinary approach. I would never start a research project without first going to a statistician and asking how shall we calculate the sample size? How many subjects do you think I will need to prove this point significant? So multidisciplinary research is a very important thing and we should be moving there. And the other thing is that we should not view interventional studies as too difficult. Some people even accuse interventional studies of being unethical. It's not true. There are ethics committees to solve that problem. Yeah. Interventional studies are so important in generating new knowledge. What is happening now is the best is doing the interventional studies, and they are doing the observational studies, just copying what they have done. So, are we doing anything to encourage? Yes, research is given prominence in university curricula like today and in postgraduate courses. I'm trying to ban dissertations, theses, and case books from each level and say you have to publish in a journal. I don't want to fill the library with black books if no one reads. There are attempts to expect this research in the environment in this situation. Right? The example that we have in Canada in the medical faculty as a research development unit. In my own university, there's a research council, They're very friendly to our researchers. There's a set of honors list for people who do good research from this state. There are cash awards for scientists who do exceptionally good research, and so on. And also, there are some national recognition programs for good research, like what the NRC is doing. So, there is some encouragement going on. And the role of the, the NRC in this encouragement is to realize that multi, a multidisciplinary approach can succeed where isolated research has failed to solve complex problems. 
and the public oriented multidisciplinary projects and the private public partnerships are two such initiatives. And these are they are prior, these have been chosen in priority given to the ten focus areas that have been identified by the National Science and Technology Report. And look at the mega projects. And challenge me if you don't think these are important for the country. The dairy industry is a very safe. Snake bite, dengue, CKD, food safety. Who will dare to challenge me and say you have not funded any possible The private public partnership, food private, well above water purification, and respiratory capital. They have been chosen here and chosen on here. It is just by accident that Kerala Indian has three of the five. Mega projects. There's no nepotism at all in there. But then there are things that this is the red tape, the data because us, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> who can say you can't do this, you can't do that. But they have a job to do. That is what academics have to understand. He has a job to do, we have a job to get done, we have to work together. And it is not a thing that we cannot do. Then, of course, there are committees. Ethics committees, research administration committees, chemical administration committees. Our ethics committee, Dharma Mahan said, it will take four months to six months for a project to be approved. The faculty board decided the committee and appointed a new committee. So, these are the discouragements that we have. But none of these are insurmountable problems, they can be overcome. So, my friends, my sons and the if I may summarize my talk, I hope I have inspired the back of the group. And I hope I have convinced you that all academics and professionals are deeply bound to do research. And I use the words very carefully, you be bound to do research. Otherwise, leave the system. The indicator of a good of good research quality in one project maybe is a provisional article in an index journal that has a reasonable impact factor for data. Sri Lanka, unfortunately, still has a poor record in scientific research, but I hope it's gradually changing. And I plan to give this talk to all the universities in the country which invite me. They have only been invited by Kalamba and Kalamba so far, and I can tell you. There is a need to increase the output of research, but also a need to shift the focus to improve quality of research from observation to intervention. And for the administrators and the seniors and the benefactors and the mentors of the young, please encourage multidisciplinary research, please encourage interventional research. And I end this talk by wishing this session all success and I hope that you will have this uh, coming years and hopefully one day invite me again so that I can fill the gaps from 2009 to 2014. Thank you. Insightful talks. I would like to invite Professor K. Summer Singha, Dean, Faculty of Agriculture, University of Peramania, to present a copy of the Proceedings of the Faculty of Agriculture Undergraduate Research Symposium, carrying a collection of abstracts of interesting research projects undertaken by the graduates of the three degree programs of the faculty as a symbolic gesture of launching the official publication of Faculty of 
Agriculture Undergraduate Research Symposium 2014 to our chief guest, Professor Jonathan D. Silva, Chairman National Research Council. For a much highlighted moment. Please join us to view in a snapshot of the highlights of the Faculty of Agriculture Undergraduate Research Symposium 2014. This is a video product of the technical expertise of the faculty. Thank 
soil cell is using the Boolean knowledge for optimal soil cells. The objective was to investigate the potential of testing the Boolean knowledge for optimal soil cells to investigate the spatial variability of soil cell and development in a dry zone territory. Isolation and characterization of preservative species from sugarcane recipe. The objective was to perform both morphological and molecular characterization of preservative species from sugarcane recipe. Diversity about the cell, let's take a bit so. Not native species in mid country of Sri Lanka. Objectives were to evaluate the nesting resource availability for non native species in vegetable ecosystems, to assess the acceptability of the introduced reed nests for their in situ conservation, and to examine the non native species diversity and abundance in different vegetable ecosystems. The impact of pre harvest factors and post harvest treatments on extending the bar's life of cut foliage, healthy and safe variety to be life. The objective was improve the bar's life of cut foliage, healthy and safe with required export quality. <coughs> Influence of supplementary regulation for greenhouse buildings to reduce green and to put down and to increase protein. The overall objective was to investigate the influence of supplementary illumination to reduce prenatal food drop and to increase grade 1 protein. Extraction of cassava is going for incorporating into cattle as a possible cassavating function of food. Objectives were two. Developing a proper method for extracting cassava memory and incorporating extracting memory purified version into a food. Development and evaluation of an integrated charcoal bit to construct a better system for grey water treatment in Sri Lanka. And the main objective was to design and develop a compact grey water treatment system for urban households in Sri Lanka. Investigation the capability of selected plant proteins to self assemble into the form of nanoscale particles with anionic polysaccharide. Objective was to prepare nanoscale particles by interacting with selected plant proteins. The comparative study of Sri Lanka and Indonesia agricultures. Objectives to determine physical, morphological, chemical, and toxin properties of Sri Lankan and Indonesian agricultures. The team to determine whether Sri Lankan and Indonesian agricultures samples are compliant with Sri Lankan standards. Physiochemical and functional properties of vela and barca seeds and seed flour. My objectives were to compare physiochemical, functional, and tasting properties of Vela and Varga seed flour. And this related to the women's choice of bacteria carriers. The objective of the study was to identify human resource management factors and social economic factors related with the choice of the banking sector for parents by women. Application of animal assisted therapy for psychological enrichment of the ALS in a long term care of the series. The objective was determine attitudes and general consideration of the ALS about pet animals and enrich psychological condition of the ALS using animal assisted therapy. A study on current status of dairy production in Monrovia district. The objective was to identify the current status of dairy production in Monrovia district of Sri Lanka. Entrepreneurial orientation and the business performance. This is the case of micro scale food processors in the district of Chetna. As the objective of the study to identify the level of entrepreneurial orientation and among the business operators and to investigate the relationship between entrepreneurial orientation and the business performance. Determinants of labor productivity in a quantity estate. A test in market and estate. The objectives were to assess the level of labor productivity in a selected estate, to identify the factors affecting the labor productivity, and to suggest the measures to improve the labor productivity. Market orientation of small scale and medium scale farmers in South Africa, Japan. 
The objective of the research work, to investigate the marketing constraints faced by the small scale and medium scale world pharmacy, Sagati Major Japan, and to examine uh, the marketing uh, strategies adapted by them to overcome those marketing constraints, and finally, to examine as we take in those marketing strategies and market oriented. Assessment of the applicability of electromagnetic saving in monitoring of open lab science in Sri Objective was to assess the applicability of the electromagnetic saving in the lab science based on treatment by absorbers and put constructive failure for the textile industry. Overall objective was to improve actual water quality using environmental friendly, low cost, locally available absorbers for the purpose of reuse. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the inaugural session of the Faculty of Agriculture Undergraduate Research Symposium 2014. Please allow me to make a few announcements. There will be three parallel sessions starting at 2.35 p.m. Session 1 of Food Production and Product Development will be held in the Lecture Room 2, Laboratory Complex, Department of Food Science. Session 2 on Natural Resources and Technological Interventions will be held here in the main auditorium. And Session 3 on Agriculture Markets, Institution and Social Economic Development will be held in the Faculty Boardroom, Administrative Building. For your convenience, transport has been arranged for those who attend this session at the boardroom. To make the identification easy, please note that the students are wearing blue tags, academic staff members are wearing green tags, judges and chairpersons are wearing purple tags, invitees are wearing yellow tags, and temporary staff members and compeers are wearing black tags. The closing ceremony will be held at the same venue at the end of the technical sessions, which is followed by the fellowship dinner. Thank you very much for joining us, and we'll meet at the same venue for the closing session. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.